everybody for coming on this important issue of the Lanes Cove seawall. A lot of you have asked me questions about the seawall, when it's going to be rebuilt, how it's going to be rebuilt, are we going to have a new design, what's going to happen with it. And rather than me write down your questions and take the questions to the administration, because I don't know the answers. I don't know the answers to the funding, how it's going to be done, if it can be done, when it would be done, or how it would be constructed or engineered. And we all know there's been trouble lately with uh, what's good for engineering on a seawall and what's not. So. That, those are the experts we'd have to talk to, but we're not at that point yet. We need to find funding to do it. So what I thought we'd do with the, um, with the permission of the mayor, she's graciously allowed some of her administration to come out and address the question openly, and the truth might hurt, but we all need to hear the same thing at the same time. And it's an open forum this evening. We can ask questions of the administration. I'd like to introduce mayor's uh, administrative assistant, Mr. Jim Duggan. How are you? Yes. He's got all the questions for the funding. And, <laughs> and I, I don't know that I need to introduce our friend Michael Hale, DPW Director. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize uh, Councilor Bob Wynott took the time to come out to listen to the issues for Lanesville tonight, too. Thank you, Bob, for coming out. <laughs> we have also invited Ann Margaret Ferrante, Representative Ferrante. Um, she said she might be a little bit late. She's going to do her best to get here. And as we all know, Senator Tarr is usually late anyway, so he will probably walk through at any time. And we appreciate their time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn over. First of all, does anybody have a pointed question they'd like to begin the meeting with as to the Lanes Cove seawall? Or do you want to just put the general discussion out there? Exactly Russell? the questions that you asked uh, okay. told us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll start with the administration. Uh, is there any likelihood, do we know whether or not there's any likelihood as to whether or not we have any hope at all for finding funding to fix the Lanes Cove seawall? Um, thank you, Jackie. Uh, what I would like to understand, everyone to understand that uh, Council Hardy has been, has been vigilant in walking into the mayor's office consistently and and advocating for for Ward 4, and especially this, this particular issue. I will absolutely positively say that. Um, and the mayor has heard has heard Jackie loud and clear. Uh, we've had consistent conversations with the Seaport Advisory Council over the course of the probably the past three years uh, regarding the necessary funding, not only for, but, but for, for the seawall that affects Lanesville, but also we're talking about um, on the boulevard, absolutely. Uh, and it's always been, um, it's in the bond bill, it's in the bond bill, it's on, it's on review, it's in the bond bill. Unfortunately, I have to explain to you right now that the mayor's most recent conversation, again, in anticipation of this meeting and hopefully being able to bring you the positive news, the Seaport Advisory Council, the executive director, has said to us, there is no money for any community for any seawall. I am telling you that the truth, I'm looking everyone in the face, this is not an easy, easy message but I was hopefully gonna bring the positive stuff. Unfortunately, it was confirmed uh, recently, and it's one of those, since I have an adjoining office to the mayor, it's, I, can, I can tell when she's, when she's not happy, and it's a matter of uh, the, uh, the levels of, of, of her voice were, were not pleasant when she was uh, uh, being uh, diligent and uh, supporting, trying to get that funding out. Um, but it is a Seaport Advisory Council, and then made that perfectly clear, all communities not just Gloucester, but every community that has submitted uh, necessary funding for that. So what we, unfortunately, um, uh, we're going to try and continue to uh, reach out and look for other funding sources, just because they're telling us, Seaport Advisory is telling us that, that I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's not in the, um, in the funding. It doesn't mean we're just gonna sit back. Uh, we are going to make sure that our new community development director um, is aware, well, he actually is aware of the importance of it, and uh, he's been tasked with, let's go out and find some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of funding, uh, whether it's in whole or in part, but at least uh, shake the trees, work with the, the state delegation, and Margaret and, and Bruce Tarr have been very receptive, and they'll support us whatever they can, and they have expressed that support time and time again. I'm sorry I can't, I wish I was here saying, Okay, design can come up and we'll be, but I just need to be upfront with everybody. And I, I uh, so I can 
if I can answer any other questions or any questions, I'll be happy to. Frank? Has anybody thought about how much money would be involved in fixing the sewer? And, and this is a general question to all of you. Right. Right. I mean, right. it's one thing to say there's no money, but if we don't even know how much money it is that there is none of, then it's <laughs> different so, issues. I can answer Frank's question. All right. Yeah. During the, the Nor'easter two years ago, Christmas, the day after Christmas, when the first section came back, um, we had um, GZA Vine out there, their marine um, engineering firm. They've designed the last four seawalls I've worked on. Um, and the estimate at that time was around seven fifty dollars to 800000 um, dollars Significantly more damage has occurred in the last few storms. Um, and just my brief conversation with them as they were in Gloucester recently is that it's at least double that right now. Um, it's not like you can just build up what's there. I mean, you really need to take a look at kind of breaking it down and building it up again. And then there will be the discussion on design. Uh, not the you know, aesthetics is part of a design, obviously, but the functionality of, you know, will that withstand um, Norwegians in the future? Um, that's a big consideration especially in the funding sources that we may be looking at, they don't want us to build something that's going to be back in the harbor in a few years. Um, just to follow up on Jim's point, the last four seawalls that I've been involved in, that goes back to 99, they've all come through the seaport bond bill. I haven't seen any other funding source for seawall construction. And that was Robinson's Landing in East Gloucester, Cripple Cove in East Gloucester, um, Fort Square Playground, and then they funded the emergency repairs at the Blinman Canal when the westerly seawall sloughed in. So that's been the traditional funding source in at least the last 15 years, um, 14 years, excuse me. We've also submitted all the paperwork to NEMA and FEMA relative to the storms. And that's an important piece too. After the Norwegian, it was 2010, Christmas 2010, um, there wasn't enough damage <coughs> county within Essex County to qualify for any federal disaster money. We need to re reach a threshold of eight million. Eight plus, million dollars statewide. Uh, countywide or statewide? Well, I thought it was statewide. County. I just think is it's it county. countywide. Is it countywide? Okay. Pretty small dollar. So you're right. It is. I'm sorry. And it was a coastal storm. Wasn't a lot of damage um, countywide. So they didn't even reach back out to us. It took us to reach to them to meme and said, you know was any funding appropriated for that event. They said, no, it didn't qualify. We've also applied after the last two events, um, and both the federal FEMA and the state MEMA, they've been down here, and we're anticipating hearing from them shortly. Um, there was enough damage during NEMO, and either the second, or the, 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 no reason after that, or the second one after that, um, to qualify. And I think they're lumping those storms together. Um, so there was enough damage countywide to perhaps qualify, but the feds have been dishing out a lot of disaster relief money lately, and so it's difficult to say what, what it's going to look like when it does come. So, I mean, that's one avenue that may be open to us. Mm -hmm. Sir. Can you help David. me with, with the Seaboard Advisory Council? Is that a state agency, or is it something with suzerainty over the it's a, it's a it's a It's a board that's made up of uh, coastal communities that you have the mayor that sits on the board. You'll have, uh, uh, you'll have Kim Driscoll, the mayor of Salem, sits on the board. The New Bedford mayor sits on the board. It's really uh, the uh, strong mayor, uh, strong mayors along uh, in the coastal communities through the state. It is, and the lieutenant governor is the chair of the Seaport Advisory Council. Is it statutory? I don't, uh, sir. I, I don't know that. I don't have that answer. I don't know, but I'll get that answer for you. I don't think I need it, but I'm just trying to identify what suzerainty, so to speak, this group would have, mm -hmm. and uh, whether or not it has anything to do with the federal uh, stuff. I don't believe it does. Yeah. Uh, that I can at least. Because historically, sure. um, I'd always thought, and I just don't know anything, which is very fine, that uh, because of the nature of the harbor, yes, that sir. it qualified um, under the rubric of uh, federal 
federal protected harbors and therefore the feds had uh, an obligation and or money to, um, because it's a protected harbor on the coast and uh, the feds have supplied money in the past. Am I just wacko? Um, it's port of refuge. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, the, uh, no, I don't. Um, I will absolutely follow up with that. And uh, would love to, I hope that that harbor of refuge in the for the federal because of the federal plans for okay. the seacoast is whether or not and I thought that historically and yes, it's probably absolutely crazy that historically some funds or some assistance had been received toward the funding from the federal fill in the blank government uh, I don't know which agency but. Okay. One that was considered, one that's had some concerns and funding for the ports, uh, the ports of refuge, you know, just uh, harbors of refuge on the coast, which the federal government had a uh, some kind of an obligation, or had assumed some kind of an obligation to um, support. Okay. Uh, that's uh, I'd be interested. And apparently, I'm just a wacko. It's not something. No, 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 no. Not at all. I always thought it was the Army Corps of Engineers that declared it a harbor of refuge. I don't know that answer. I well, whatever governmental agency, federal, might okay. be involved. Uh, there's a plus and minus to that, I suppose. Okay. But, uh, I know they do the bridges, Anne, but I didn't know that they did the seawalls. Well, it did, uh, the rubric is the rubric is a harbor of refuge under the uh, you know sea okay. sea business. I mean, damage to the wall in the past, if there's any you know disaster relief money, I mean that's pretty much channeled from the federal government to the state government to the communities. I mean that wouldn't be a surprise, and certainly the Army Corps would have a, a review. Of permitting application, but they certainly wouldn't be a funding source. I mean, Army Corps reviews most most sea <laughs> projects that we do anyway, um, of a large scale. Well, I don't know whether back away FEMA ever existed or if they've ever had anything to do with some of the uh, prior uh, experiences, because this goes back quite a way. Some of these repairs. Mm. Do we have any questions from any fishermen who get protection from the um, from the little harbor created by the seawall? Any fishermen here? <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> what are you going to need to get you through if the seawall's not going to be um, rebuilt? I already lost one boat down there because the wall went down. I don't want to lose another one. Mm -hmm. And does anybody know, because of the damage um, to the seawall, whether or not the kids who like to dive off of the seawall on the end between the two openings, whether or not that's going to be a dangerous situation this year because of the rockfall? And what can the city be doing that, about that's that? Safe. Right? It might be an instance where some of those boulders have gone in the gap. Right. It might not be as deep as it should be. I think the bigger concern I'd have is the kids walking out on the Right. Damage side, walking the rocks. You know, and stop. they will. Right. Yeah. I, I got a couple of them outside right now. That'll. Right. And diving off that diving board, you don't have any clue how many of those granite blocks. Are there. The diving board is rolling. Yeah, yeah. The diving board. Both, both sides are dangerous. Even, I mean, so the whole thing is dangerous. And the, the other wall, the north side, that's getting, I mean, that's getting hurt too. It's oh, yeah. not something that's not, you know, not in trouble. It is a trouble. The water that came through that wall during the blizzard is pretty amazing. Yeah. Right through the wall. Yeah. Right right wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. Mike, the, the original estimate that Nucci Vine supplied a couple of years ago, the seven or 800000 did that involve any of the additional outside work, adding more riffraff to kind of prevent it, or was it simply restacking what we had? Well, the break was much smaller then. Um, and there was still some design considerations to take into it account for. I mean, it was put, we had to, we only had I think 11 days from that, that event, oh, probably from New Year, the, the second, because we didn't do much between the 26th and the 1st, um, to get our paperwork into MEMA. They give you a very short window. Uh, I think they do that on purpose, so you, you can't tally everything up as neatly as you'd like. So it was a fairly quick estimate looking at what could be done to restore that. 
you know, I think some of the concerns I'd have are the size stone in that wall. It's a fairly small stone. Um, from the last time, certainly the north side was constructed, this real small stone mm -hmm. in that piece. Um, and that's what some of the costs shouldn't be born from is, you know, new stone. Um, and what the design would be at that time would kind of take into account what type of armament you'd have up front. Right. I guess that's what I'm thinking. If we're up at $2 million now, but we're simply not addressing the front side of the wall and that $2 million, we're just... No, I, I, I think the $2 million would probably get... Again, the, the, the design consideration is going to be one of those topics that, um, yeah. you know, I don't want to be sitting up here having that discussion. It's going to be a pretty heated discussion mm -hmm. sure. because I honestly think a, a seawall that will support nor'easters in the future probably won't look like the Lanescope seawall. Mm -hmm. so, what the bolt ramp like? Um, bolt ramp is under the waterways jurisdiction. Last year, um, the state gave, it was last year, maybe the year before that, they gave 16 new concrete um, planks. It was half the number that was needed. Uh, that's all the state had to give um, Jim Callcat. Uh, we installed them for Jim, um, so they would absorb no costs. But that's all that was available at that time. I asked Jim to take a look again this year to see if, this, if the state has any more funding um, to replace it, because even of those 16 replaced, um, it sustained more damage this winter um, than the ones below that are in desperate shape and they're dangerous to walk on. Um, I don't let my kids go on the ramp just because of the rebar that sticks out of it. Um, and that could be any one of us. I mean, probably worse for us, probably heavier. I go right through our foot, but it's definitely an issue that Waterways Board is aware of. If that's not available, can you pull your own? Um, I mean, it's simple. Potentially. I mean, that's something that, again, you know, Tony Gross would probably want to do some, you know, or Jim would do some permitting, Jim Colcat, that is, um, on having a poured concrete boat ramp. We'd certainly lend services to him for that. Public Works would. You need Chapter 91 approval? Um, probably at least an order, notice of intent. They may already have notice of intent that covers. They have a lot of permitting that covers the repair and maintenance of their um, of their infrastructure, the landings and so forth. So they may have something rolled up already, but there has been no discussions with them and us regarding repairs of that nature. You know, I, I have to say this is it's so deja vu. It's, uh, most of us were at Plum Cove about 15 years ago when we went through this same confrontation. And um, at the time, the federal government and the state government, for that matter, was basically a wash in cash, and that's not the case anymore. And I think it's, although we should certainly keep our eye out for that kind of money, the truth of the matter is that Gloucester as a city is going to have to either invest in Lanes Cove or let it go. Um, and so the question is, to what extent can we <coughs> look to the city to start a <coughs> process by which the, the issue can be studied, never mind waiting for the federal government because they're not going to be here. That's, mm -hmm. that's what entitlements battle was all about. They're, they're gone now. We're on our own. And the question is, are we on as Lanesville or as, are we on our own as Boston? And mm -hmm. although I wouldn't spend a lot of time chasing federal money, <coughs> I would look to uh, Carolyn <coughs> and the city council to at least decide whether they want to invest the money in looking into what would be a fix of this situation. Not talking $2 million now, but what can we do to stabilize about this, stabilize this present situation? And I think that's where you guys come in because you represent the legislative branch and the administrative branch, and you, the city's got to decide whether they want to spend the time and the effort to make this thing work, or we just throw in the towel, which I'm sure nine-tenths of the city would probably say, don't you guys get it up there? That this wall is going to keep coming down, and we're going to keep spending money to fix it up again for the sake of what, 10 commercial people and another 20 uh, recreational voters? Uh, 
that's the debate that I think should be going on. And that's a debate that I would weigh in and say, listen, there's reasons why we need to work on this thing and at least figure out um, near-term fixes to say nothing of a long-term structural solution. But it's, it's going to come from the city. I, I think we're, we're talking about the Seacoast Advisory Committee or FEMA or a little... They're not, they, 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 well, they're not I, the Sandy, Hurricane Sandy, yeah. Katrina. They don't care about a little tiny little harbor up in North Gloucester. And, and so why do we keep looking to them to save us? Why don't we say, are we going to try to save ourselves or are we going to try to save us? Well, I think, I think what we probably first want to do is just to check it off the box. Good, the Senate is here. Yes, sit down and sit here, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, excuse me. So it's, uh, but kind of checking off the box. We also want to. We also want to try and leverage outside funds as as much as possible and push that envelope as much as possible. When ultimately, you, you know, you look at under every rock, you you open every envelope and. There's, <laughs> And there's nothing in there. Then we have to take a you know a self examination and say, okay, let's look at it. Let's look at it on a community level. The investment we need to do and work among and work within our confines of our of our financial structure and our and our legislative yeah. uh, legislative support. But the problem, Jim, is that that's what they did to us the last time around, and it was about three or four years of wasted time as these guys were checking off the blocks. Okay. And then. Finally, we got around to getting something done about it, but there is no more blocks to check off. I mean, we're in the era of, of you know, they're shutting down airports. Why do they care about uh, uh, Lanesville? Right. You know, it, it, I don't mind you guys keeping checking off the blocks, but I think we should be on a parallel path, or we're just going to, five years from now, we're going to be in the same situation. So the question is, does the city care about Lanesville? I think and if it doesn't, that's okay. I mean, I get it. North Gloucester might as well be a separate town as far as most of those folks think. Right. Um, but at least that's the level at which, if there's any action contemplated, that's the level at which it should be going on. Well, Frank, I mean, of course the city, you know, of course the administration cares about Lanesville, and I think if not to just to signal out Lanesville. I'm not talking about the administration, I'm talking about the, about the populace. You know? Okay. I mean, we're, we're a tiny part of this. Huge town that's got a lot of financial problems. So, can we look for help from Gloucester, from in terms of the city council, in terms of the administration, or can't we? Because if we can't, then we've got a different problem on our plate. You can, and the, and at least coming from at least coming from the voice from within the administration, okay. and I think you'll have Council President Hardy supporting that on the legis on the legislative side. I mean, it's a matter of looking at comprehensive, not just pulling out. Lanesville, we have to look at all the seawalls, you know, in our community, and we have to, you know, properly assess and have a, you know, it's it's just like when you apply, you know, we apply infrastructure. We have to look at long-term paving or infrastructure plan. We also have to look at that in terms of the seawalls, and we, you know, on a parallel on a parallel track, such as, you know, reach continuously reaching out to the support advisory council or other funding sources. But absolutely, I think it's something that we need to. You know, include Lanesville uh, when we are evaluating the seawalls in the entire community, mm -hmm. and not just and not just pull you out and just do a, a micro examination of that. We have to make it in all inclusive, absolutely, because you know other areas of the city are just as important as Lanesville. So that that is my answer. Mm -hmm. And starting that process, I mean, literally the phone call that. I heard the, the mayor talk to the Seaport Advisory Council literally just happened uh, last last Thursday or last Friday. Yeah, but they're not going to go with that. No, they're not. But now it's the time. Money is really cheap now. That's the thing that blows my mind. Money, municipal bonds are, God only knows what the interest rate, but it's so low that if there ever was a time to be investing in our infrastructure mm -hmm. here in Boston, mm -hmm. this would be the time. Mm -hmm. Understood. Thank you. Mike, what's this? What would be the cost of designing a new seawall? Just get it in the design phase. Let's you know get the ball rolling mm -hmm. to, to figure out what it's actually going to cost to fix this, <coughs> so we know how much money we need. Like Sid is saying, 
maybe 10 to 15, maybe 20% of the project, depending on the complexity of it, of the design. And that's part of it. That's kind of a big difference between 10 and 20%. But I mean, there's, it's not just designing what all the pictures of Lane's Cove was. I think it's going to be, there's a need to be some studies done of, of, of you know, patterns of, of coastal destruction. Um, and just from that point, you'll be able to develop the best scenario. And then from there, you have to sell what it looks like. Uh, I'm not talking a big concrete barricade up there, but it may just not have the same vertical outer face. Um, maybe the interior face could be, but the outside may look different. Um, so I think it's a fair estimate of design. So, so if said 15%, you say $150,000, that'd be a reasonable sum to have a complete study done with designs. And if we continue to let it erode even further, and every time a storm yeah. comes and it doubles the cost, and doubles the cost, then five years down the road, it's $10 million because now you're going to fix the whole inside of the cove because mm -hmm. that's all eroded. What cove? Yeah, well, that's right. The houses, you got houses down in there. It's not just cluster the boats that are involved. Right. Mm -hmm. All that waterfront property. Right. That wall goes all yeah, the way down. Two houses down there would get water. Bill Stoll's house would. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to thank Senator Tarr for taking the time to come on board. And did you bring any good news with you? <laughs> <laughs> this is a stack of checks. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know who to make it up to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here, and actually I, I can offer, I think, a couple of ways forward, um, but I also think we need to put this problem in context, mm -hmm. and, and I would just begin by saying that my office, and, as well as Representative Ferranti's office, works all the time uh, with these two gentlemen uh, to try to find solutions to things, and the recent example that I can think of is the uh, issue regarding sidewalks that are needed in West Gloucester. And they're desperately needed in West Gloucester. And